Hello, my name is Pastor Mark. I'd like to welcome you to the worship service for Woods United Methodist Church. Um, no, this is not the church building. Uh, because of the weather, we decided not to have service at the church building yesterday. And I say yesterday uh, because with some technical problems I had, you think I'd have figured those all out before. Um, we, uh, we did our service uh, today on Monday. So, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, I'm glad to have you with us. Uh, for those of you who watch regularly on Facebook uh, or on YouTube, I'm glad to share this time with you. And for those of you who have been very excited in coming to church but are having to watch this via video, um, sorry that I can't see you this week, uh, but I look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday. Now, as we think about coming up and a word about this Sunday, uh, I want to mention something. So remember these things that we were wearing at church, and hopefully uh, you've been able to wear around in the community, the masks, the face mask. Uh, we're going to be going back to these uh, for the rest of the month of January, uh, looking at the rising numbers of COVID both in the state and in our community. The health team and I have decided that uh, this was the best course of action for us to do. Uh, we're going to be uh, applying this for the entire month of January. We will look at it again as we uh, begin February and see where we are and what we need to do next. Um, hopefully our numbers will lower and we'll feel more comfortable being back to where we are. Um, now, uh, this is also going to apply for any meetings that come up at church, uh, any activities that are at church. I need to wear masks. Please practice social distancing. If you're not feeling well, please stay home. Uh, we will miss you, but we will love you. So um, I want to keep those things in mind for us. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to, to let me know um, or let us know. Uh, we'll answer them as best and as quickly as we can. Now, um, I also want to say that uh, as we think about this week and activities coming up, the Evangelism Committee is meeting on Tuesday night. Uh, so um, they will be wearing their mask and be a part of that. We have a uh, Council on Ministries meeting coming up um, in another week. So uh, everybody be ready for that. I know that Paulette would like to have the committees have all their reports together and ready as we meet. So um, with those things said, and I know uh, it's, it's a blessing to see how many activities that we have going on, um, even though sometimes uh, with this coming, we may feel a little uncertain about them. Uh, it's still exciting to see and it's exciting to know what the church is doing and how the church is uh, making it through all of this. So. I invite us to take this time now to set our hearts and our minds in an attitude of prayer and praise. I'm chuckling because I have my um, assistant here uh, to help with the worship today. Uh, say hi. Uh, this is Luna. Um, she is hoping that I have a treat for her, which I do not. But um, you might get one from your mother if you go when she whistles there. So, All right, go. There we go. Okay. So... Um, worship assistant aside, uh, maybe she's our acolyte for today. I don't know. Um, anyway, let us set our hearts and our minds in an attitude of prayer and praise as we come before God this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the unexpected. We thank you for the gift of life among us. We thank you, O Lord, for the gift of your presence when we need you there. Lord, let that spirit of love, life, and comfort, peace, be with us as we share this time together now. In your name we pray, O Lord. Amen. Well, um, we're going to start with our reading from our scripture. Where did I put my... Here we go. Um, we're going to be reading from the Gospel of John, the second chapter, uh, verses 1 through 11. Um, uh, so, um, John uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Sorry, I'm concerned slightly. Uh, dear wife, is the dog supposed to be eating this? Yes. You never know with a dog what they're eating, if they're supposed to be eating or not. So, it's chaos around here. Trust me. But we're going to read from the scripture. So, um, the Gospel of John, chapter 2, uh, beginning with verse 1, we hear these words. 
On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jars, six stone water jars, for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out, and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom, and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Now, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, let the word we share, the word we hear, be your word for us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so let me get one thing out of the way really quickly for everybody, because I hear this all the time. People will say to me, hey, you know what? It's plenty fine for me to drink because Jesus turned water into wine at the wedding. That is not what this is about. We can have a different conversation about whether it is appropriate for people to drink or not or whatever, but this has nothing to do with that, so stop saying it, okay? Getting tired of that. Um, and I love this story, too, as you think about the relationship uh, between Jesus and his mother. There they are sharing this time at a wedding. And Jesus' mother sees that there's a, a problem coming up, that the bridegroom and, and the bride could be embarrassed for having run out of wine at the wedding. I mean, that would be a, a social faux pas. And so seeing her son and, and knowing that her son, believing in what her son could do, she turns to him and says, they have no wine. Not really a, a, a directive, not really an instruction, not really a, um, here's what I need you to do. Just simply, they have no wine. I know that you can fix this, but they have no wine and they need some help. And Jesus says, woman, pause for a second and imagine that your mother has said something to you like that. And you turn to her and say, woman, I don't think it would go well. But this is Jesus, so I guess he can say whatever he wants. Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. Jesus is saying that the time for me to show what I can do, my powers, my abilities, what I'm going to be doing for people, not yet here. So why should I worry about this thing? Why should I take care of this problem for them? And Jesus' mother, hearing him but not really hearing him, you know how mothers do? Um, for all the mothers out there, I apologize. Um, I don't mean to pick on you. But I'm going to pick on you right now. Um, his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Jesus hasn't said he's going to do anything. He hasn't said he's going to help. But his mother knows that she can make him do something. So she simply turns to the servants and say, well, do whatever he tells you. I can see this almost exasperated look on Jesus' face as he's kind of, D didn't she hear, maybe looking at the disciples, didn't she just hear me say that I, ah, so fine. So he tells them to fill these water jars to the brim and take them to the chief steward. And in the process, they become wine. And not just any kind of wine, but an amazing quality of wine. The chief steward tasted and says, oh my goodness, this is the best wine that I have ever tasted. And he honors the bridegroom by saying, look, you have done, most people present the really great wine to impress people first. And then when the guests are drunk and they can't tell the difference, they bring out the other stuff. 
but you, you saved the best for last. It's an amazing gift that you, it's an amazing thing that you've done. And the disciples see Jesus do this and they are amazed and they believe in what they've seen. Now, there's a lot going on here that is not just a wedding feast. There's a lot here that is not just a conversation between a boy and his mother. But there's a lot of symbolism in what happens and what we see in here. So one of the things that um, we have noticed in this is that Jesus will tell people later he is living water. We, we think of the story of the woman in the well when Jesus talks to her about her drawing water and he says to her, if you knew you could drink from the fountain of living water and you would never be thirsty again. This is living water. Water that has come to mean something amazing. Because when we think about, we think about communion, we think about those times, we think about the wine, we think about the blood of Christ, the, the sacrifice that Christ makes for all people, for all of humanity. This is a reminder of that, that living water that leads us to salvation. When Jesus says, it's not my time yet, he's not talking about, it's not my time to do an amazing miracle. It's not my time to make wine appear out of anything, but it's not my time yet to reveal myself as the one who provides salvation for everyone and for all people. And so Jesus is saying here, there's something more at work than just simply, just simply saving a bridegroom from embarrassment. And when we think about the stories of the coming of the new kingdom, they are often talked about in the terms of a wedding and a wedding banquet and a wedding feast. Jesus, the bridegroom, waiting for the bride, for the church. And so here we see again this imagery of, of new possibilities, of new hope, of a new kingdom that is coming into place that is going to make the world new and better for us not simply just dealing with a wedding here in Cana of Galilee. But I think it's something significant too, uh, the vessels that are used, the, the containers that are there, they're not just simply jars that are sitting by the side. Um, you ever had that moment when you need some water, you need to bring water out, and you're looking for everywhere for water? Uh, and something to carry it in and you can't find it um, because you need a lot of water. I mean, you could bring it out by the glass, but you need more than that. When I used to wait tables, um, one of the things you'd have people would ask for water and we had these pitchers. Uh, some were used for tea and some were used for water. And there were some times when you couldn't find a pitcher that we needed uh, to have to be able to bring people water. And if you've ever been at a restaurant and you've been waiting for that person to bring you water, you're wondering, why don't they just get some water and bring it out? And meanwhile, you don't realize they're going crazy, running all around, trying to find something they can bring water to you in. I know that, that feeling, and these are specifically set aside for that purpose and that task, for carrying the water, for containing the water, for the rites of purification, for the rites that remind us, that help us to know that we are part of the community. We have been washed clean. And we talk about that through Jesus and through his sacrifice and through Jesus' blood about us being washed clean and made new. We, we do that in our communion service. We talk about the blood of Christ that helps us when we share it together, when we take part in it together. Almost like we're at a feast, maybe a wedding feast or something. When we share in that wine, when we share in that blood, we are washed clean and given forgiveness. And what better gift is there than forgiveness? How often do we find ourselves in a situation where we really need forgiveness and we don't know where to find it? And we need someone that can help us not to make it out of thin air, not to just make it poof and appear with no value to it 
but forgiveness that appears as a way of helping others to be connected together. If the wine runs out at the wedding, the bridegroom is, is embarrassed. People will be talking about this for ages. It'll be the thing that went wrong. It'll be reflective on his place in the community and his inability to care for those around him. And he is saved of all of that because of what Jesus' mother makes Jesus do. The wine steward tasted the water that had become wine. And he did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn it from the water, who had drawn the water knew. It's not important for those who are in charge to understand the process of forgiveness here. What is important is for them to know that it is available. The chief steward doesn't need to know where the wine came from. The chief steward doesn't need to know that five minutes ago the water, the wine was simply water in these vessels. What the chief steward knows is what we all need to know, that the opportunity is there for us. And it's not, it's not something that is simply a half-hearted gesture. It's the best that we have to bring. It's the best that we can put forward. <clears throat> Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This revelation of Jesus' power, this showing how Jesus can work things, not simply on the surface of what we see, but in the layers underneath of here, show a real sense of the depth of the power of Jesus at work in the world. The depth of power that reaches into us in those difficult moments. The depth of the power that can shape us, mold us, comfort us in our pain, celebrate with us in our times of celebration and joy, and simply hold us in those quiet moments when we need to stop and to reflect. I hope, I hope, that we don't use a text like this or any other text in the Bible to, to take it and just justify something that we want to say. Again, the number of times that I've heard someone say, well, you know, Jesus turned water into wine as his first miracle, so I can pretty much do whatever I want with this keg of beer over here. Um, it's not the way that works. We have to read we have to listen, we have to share, we have to read deeply. We have to look at what the meanings of so many things are. John Wesley said that um, Scripture contains all that we need for salvation. Everything that we need is here. But he also said that there are other things, reason, experience, revelation of the Spirit, that help us to understand what we are reading so everything we need is here we just have to learn and spend some time growing i hope that as we read our scriptures as we look at things like this wedding at cana we see more than just what's on the surface more than just a boy and his mother and his mother telling him what to do and in his frustration with this woman we see that there is so much packed in here about God's mercy, grace, justice, and new life coming to be with us and to share with us. I hope that you will share too in this new life and this new hope. I hope that for you, you will taste 
the water that has become the wonderful wine, the water that has become the salvation that we see today and always available for us in the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the gift of today and the words you share with us. May we be reminded of the gracious coming of your kingdom. May we be reminded of your life, of love, of hope that is given to all of us. In your name we pray. Amen. I want to take just a few moments now as we uh, move forward in our service for uh, some prayers. Uh, prayers for our community, prayers for those in the church. Um, there are a number of people who are on our list um, who are in need of your healing, uh, need of God's healing grace, or in need of God's mercy in times when healing that comes is maybe not the healing that we want. So as we take this moment, let us open ourselves to God's grace in who we are. Let us pray. Let us intercede before God, whose hands provide for the needs of all, for the church, that adorned by one spirit with a variety of gifts, the church may delight in diversity and persevere in unity. We pray for the world, that the nations may lay aside the hatreds of the past and find new future together. We pray that the weary of violence, countries ravaged by ethnic, ethnic conflict, may begin to rebuild their spirit no longer desolate. We pray that as a living sign of one of the Spirit's manifold gifts, gifts our community may bear witness, rejoicing in the variety of ministries and activities by which we serve one God. We pray that trusting in the power and compassion of Jesus, we faithful servants may hasten his coming in this hour. Gracious Lord, you know those who we lift up today from our church, whose names are upon our hearts and our minds. We ask, O oh Lord, that your grace would be upon them, you know the needs that are before them. You know, O oh Lord, the healing that is needed for them, the healing that is coming. Not always the healing that we ask for, but as you give to us, O oh Lord, the healing that we need. We pray for those who have returned to school as they move forward in their studies, as they grow and learn that, O oh Lord, you would help them. And for those who teach them as well, that in this difficult time, you would help guide them in what they do. And we pray, O oh Lord, for the world around us as we deal with this new branch of COVID. Help us to understand the ways that we may protect one another, that we may guide and lead and show the love that you have for them through our actions, through our willingness to be the examples that you call us to be. In your name we pray, O oh God. Amen. Well, I'm glad to have a chance to spend a time with you. Um, for those of you who will be watching online next week, I continue. I, hope, uh, I look forward to being able to share in this time like this. And for those of you who will be coming back into the church next week, provided the snow gives us that opportunity. I look forward to seeing you there as well. Wherever you are and whatever you do, may God's grace be upon you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, go with God's grace. Amen.